to start my today's session without further delaying. So my today's topic is game theory. The remaining topic that is graphical method will be discussed in today's class. First of all, we'll try to understand what graphical method is with respect to a two by two, two by two game. Okay, so for this, I'm going to consider a game which is given as follows. So for example, let's consider this game. Uh, let us name this game by G and this matrix one, four, three, two. This is your game. Graphical method is also a kind of method which helps us to find uh, the mixed strategy. Okay, with this particular method, we try to find out the mixed strategy of the players. So obviously, uh, since it is a matter of finding mixed strategy, so it happens only when the pure strategy of the game doesn't exist, okay? So for algebraic method, what we did, we first tested the uh, game with respect to von Neumann, Maximin and Minimax criteria. And when the mixed strategy, when the uh, saddle point didn't exist, and we, we, are, we are sure that uh, pure strategy for the game is not existing, then, then we went for algebraic method. The same structure will be maintained in graphical method also. So first of all, step number one, <clears throat> make sure that the game doesn't have any optimal pure strategy. Using von Neumann Maximin and Minimax criteria. This particular criteria is so important that you have to use this always, whether you apply graphical method or algebraic method, because it is said and it is it has been found that if the if for a particular game the von Neumann and uh, von Neumann Maximin and Minimax criteria it gives you solution. And without checking, if you go for algebraic method or a graphical method to find mixed strategy, the, then the solution obtained by those methods will be a garbage solution. So this is a very essential step before you start doing anything with algebraic and graphical. Okay. So let us try to find it out. <clears throat> so quickly we can do that we will calculate the row minimum. A row minimum here for the first row is one and for the second row it is two. And column max for the first column is three and for the second column is four. And therefore, the maximum value will be the max of all row minimums Okay, and therefore this will be max of these two numbers, which is two and minimax value will be, minimax value will be min of all column maximum, which is min of three and four, that is three. So we find out by von Neumann maximum and minimax criteria that our conclusion is pure strategy for this game does not exist. Pure strategy for the above game does not exist as If I denote this by new uh, minus, and if we denote this by new plus, we see that new minus and new plus, they are not same. And therefore, we are free to apply 
either algebraic method or graphical method as has been asked in the examination okay but algebraic method has already been discussed so today i'm going to explain how to solve the game with the help of a graphical method okay so it is all it is all a matter of analysis so you have to do the analysis you have to perform previously you used to perform the analysis using algebraic method now you are going to do the analysis using the graphical method so step number 2 is if step 1 fails to yield any pure strategy then apply graphical or algebraic for to, to start with we shall discuss uh, the graphical method from the view point of 2 by 2 game okay because 2 by 2 game are always easy to understand and i mean for for uh, since you are learning it first so we have to begin with the basics okay so let's start and let's do the thing on the next page probably you have copied the thing so i can with your permission i'm going to the next page to uh, start with the graphical method okay so oh, okay just a minute yeah you right so you say you you can ask me that yeah you can uh, can i solve this particular game in uh, with uh, algebraic method the answer is yes if nothing is mentioned if nothing is mentioned uh, in the question and you are just asked to solve the game with uh, solve the game then you can apply either graphical method or algebraic method whatever the case but if it is asked to analyze the situation using a particular method if this is mentioned then you have to go for that method by hook or by crook so i think uh, you know this thing uh, devajyoti you have already learned uh, this uh, maximin and minimax criteria it is just said that uh, this uh, maximin minimax criteria means you are going to find this values and if the values are same saddle point exists and pure strategy of the game exists but if they are not same then pure strategy of the game does not exist okay yeah it fails to yield any pure so we can we have we know that this particular game if it has solution that solution is a mixed strategic solution it is not a pure strategic solution so let's start graphical method so first of all we shall try to write the game the game which is given we denote the game by g we will write we'll write the matrix first 1 4 and 3 2 let us write the matrix and since nothing is mentioned since nothing is mentioned about the players so we can imagine two hypothetical players who are playing the given game g so we are naming the player as capital a as the maximizing player with strategies 1 and 2 and player b minimizing player with strategies 1 and 2 okay we can name them and since this game is a and we can call this game as game g now just like we did now this is the structure of the game so i am again going to write the game because i have to introduce some more quantities in the in the table in the chart so let us draw the game once again 1 4 3 and 2 i have written the player names and their strategy just to remind you that yeah we always keep the maximizing player to the extreme left and minimizing player to the top of the game now keeping this in mind keeping this structure in mind we know since the uh, this particular matrix has no pure strategy so we can consider some probabilities with respect to the strategies for the player a and player b so let us Uh, put the strategies over there so these strategies these strategies are not known to me because we are going to solve the game to find out the mixed strategy so suppose the x is the probability with with which the player a selects its uh, his strategy 1 and 1 minus x is the probability with which player a selects the strategy 2 and uh, <clears throat> the probabilities have been chosen in such a way so that the total probability is always 
The similar thing can be done with player B also. Player B selects strategy Y and one minus Y. With Y, he selects strategy one and with one minus Y, he st selects strategy two. Now, we are going to analyze the situation first. First analysis will be like this. Okay. We shall try to view, visualize the game from the maximizing player, player's point of view. Okay. Not the minimizing player's point of view. Always remember, visualize the game from maximizing player. Let, let us write it over here. Visualize the game. Visualize means study. Study the game from maximizing player's point of view now. Okay, so this is our choice. So uh, <clears throat> first analysis is number one. If uh, player B sticks to the strategy one, then the expected payoff of player A will be, as you know already, this will be x into 1 plus 1 minus x into 3. We can further simplify this. We can write it as x plus 3 minus 3x, and that would be 3 minus 2x. So that is the expected payoff of the player A if player B sticks to strategy one. And if player B sticks to strategy two, then the expected payoff of player A will be EX2, which is X into four plus one minus X into two. And if you further simplify this, you will get two plus twice X. So these are the two expected payoffs which you have obtained. Let us put it inside a box so that it always remains in our mind that these are the expected payoffs and we are going to analyze the game with respect to this. Remember that we are visualizing the game from the maximizing player's point of view. Now, <clears throat> what, will you, what will you do next? If it were an algebraic method, we could have used the formula which we studied in the uh, earlier class. But here we are going to uh, apply the uh, we are going to apply graphical method for, for finding the solution of the problem. So we are going to draw some kind of graph over here. So let us try to draw two graphs. So the process is, I am I'm going to draw the graph on the next page. But before here, I'm going to write some uh, lines uh, so that uh, you you will also be able to get uh, to get some time to copy the paragraph which I've written above. Okay, so the first of all, what we'll do, we shall draw two vertical lines, lines, unit distant apart, unit distant apart from one another. one line passing through zero and another passing through one as x the probability lies between zero and one 
Therefore, we are choosing two lines, one passing through zero and another passing through one. Okay, so can I go to the next page? Or shall I have to wait? And we know that we are supposed to find the mixed strategy x which is equal to x comma 1 minus x okay many lines have been written so it takes some time the entire thing is actually an analysis sort of thing so we have to do the analysis previously we did the analysis algebraically now we are going to do the analysis graphically so this part you try to remember this is one of the steps actually so first of all we are going to draw two lines two vertical lines one unit distant apart from one another one line passing through zero that means this point zero and another line passing through one that means this point one why is this so these lines actually denote the probabilities actually okay so this is the zero probability this is the one probability and because your strategies x is lying between zero and one so therefore the two vertical lines have been drawn passing through these two uh, limits one lower limit and the upper limit of the probability So I'm going to the next page. Uh, so first of all, we are going to draw the lines here. Just a minute. This is my line, which passing through zero. And this is another line which passing through one. Okay. And so you can put or write it over here. You can write this line to be x equal to zero and this line to be x equal to one. And we are joining them. And this is, we can, we can consider this line. This x is the probability here. This x is probability. And here we can put this point since it is a real line. So real line is always consisting of numbers and this is the probability line. So you know the probabilities will be always lying between zero and one. So probably uh, we are going to put this value as zero. Okay. And uh, uh, one, one thing, one thing, uh, since uh, there is there, I have to modify a bit over here. Since we are visualizing the thing, visualizing the game from the maximizing player's point of view. So what we need to do is that we shall write this line as y equal to zero and this line as y equal to one. Okay. And uh, this, the points which will be, I will be uh, setting over here. These points will be uh, the proper points for the uh, x. Okay. So this imp imp implies that this line, when uh, player one, uh, this uh, with respect to minimizing player is also a part of the game. So minimizing player choosing his strategy uh, one and two with respect to that, how maximizing player is going to behave with his, uh, uh, with his uh, strategies that we are going to plot over here. Okay, and we have got the straight lines. I mean, we have got the expected lines from here, EX1, which is three minus two X. So we can write it over here, EX1 is equal to three minus two X and EX2, that is two plus two X. Okay, these are the two lines we are going to fit 
over here. First of all, we are going to since since x is lying between zero and one. First of all, we are going to put x equal to zero over here. First of all, we are going to put x equal to zero over here. So if we put, let us put. We can name this line as line one, and we can name this line as line two. So instead of writing y equal to zero and y equal to one, that it would be much better if you consider this uh, straight lines to be line one and line two. Then the representation will be much more uh, appropriate. Now let us put. X equal to, or or or, uh, it would be it would be nice if you don't write line one and line two over here because otherwise, uh, these are my what I what should I say? These are my uh, frame of reference. So frame of reference should not be written line one and line two. Line one and line two we are going to plot with respect to the frame frame of reference. So we are going to we are going to write something uh, over here. We are going to write. A strategy one uh, and the strategy two, that would be much more, I mean, appropriate. So we can we can we can name these two vertical lines by any means. Okay, this is not important. Important is what we get, what we plot with respect to these equations. So let us put x equal to zero in line one, and with then what will be the value of the expected uh, payoff of the player one this expected payoff of the player one for x equal to 0 will be 3 and when we put when we put x equal to 1 i am actually putting the lower limits and the upper limits the expected payoff of the player one is becoming one okay so what do we get we are getting two points so uh therefore uh i think with respect to this if i write this now x equal to zero and x equal to one that would be more appropriate why is it so because this is my frame of reference x, x equal to zero with respect to which I'm visualizing the expected payoff of player one. And this is x equal to one with respect to which I'm visualizing the expected pay, play, payoff of player one. When player two sticks to the strategy one. So here sh I shouldn't write one and two, this numeral one and two. I actually use the strategy Roman one and Roman two. So let us write it as Roman one and Roman two. Otherwise you'll get confused. So what I'm what i'm what, what i have got i have got two points three and one one for x equal to zero and another for x equal to one by putting these values in line one these are the expected payoffs of the player one so if this is the scale real scale so what i go, i'm going to do i'm going to plot this point over here so suppose uh, this point is uh, Suppose this point is one, this point is uh, two, this point is three, and this is the positive side. Okay, I'm considering this to be the positive side and that to be the negative side. This is a convention. So here this point is three. So I'm going to put, yeah, I'm going to write three over here. And when x equal to one, the expected play payoff of the player one is one. So here I'm choosing this probability line to be x equal to one. So I'm going to write I'm going to mark the points here also. And this is my point one, because this line is also zero. Okay. And therefore this line is also zero. And therefore this is my point one. And I'm going to join them by a straight line. So these two points will be joined by a straight line. So three, one. Why it is zero? Don't think that this number is one. They are unit distant apart. Yeah, but this is a scale and that is a scale. In this scale, I'm going to put the expected payoff. In that scale, I'm going to put the expected payoff. And therefore, every scale is having some sort of origin. So this is the origin of the scale and this is the origin of the scale, of this scale. 
what is this scale this scale is named as probability scale when the probability is zero x equal to zero scale and this scale is named as x equal to one scale these are the names of the scale these are not the values these are the names of the scale so uh, i have plot these two points over here and what does it mean actually this means that this means that when player 2 or player b sticks to strategy 1 then we get line 1 we get line 1 now we are going to draw the line 2 line 2 is obtained line 2 is obtained when player B sticks to strategy two. Okay, so let us do the analysis once again. So for, for getting line two, and we can write this name over here. We can write this as line one. Okay, now for, for getting line two, we are going to plot once again, we are going to plot, let us name is a, number A, so number B, we are going to put X equal to zero in line two. And we get the expected payoff X equal EX two as two. And for X equal to one, we get EX two as four. So this uh, for so for x equal to zero line in the probability zero line, uh, one point has already been marked. This is one. This is two. This is three. And here, one, two, three. And let us mark the point four over here because this is my requirement. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark these two points. First of all, I'm going to mark uh, the point. Uh, sorry. First of all, I'm going to mark the point two in the scale. And then I'm going to mark the point four in the scale and let us join them by a straight line. Okay. And this is my line one. Uh, sorry, line two. This is my line two. And this point is the point of intersection. This point is the point of intersection. So we can drop a straight line from there we can drop a straight line from there on the on this point and we can draw another straight line from there on this point what does this mean we are going to find because the two lines are intersecting with one another we are going to find the coordinate of this point let us name this point to be capital p let us name this intersecting point as capital p to find the coordinate of the point P, of the point P, we equate the following. So my, uh, this is my line one. What I'm going to equate, I'm going to equate line one and line two. So let us try to do it. So if I equate three minus twice X with two minus two plus twice X, let us solve this and we'll get uh, 4x is equal to 1 and therefore x equal to 1 by 4 and by putting x equal to 1 by 4 in line 1 or in line 2 we get we get the another point which is uh, <clears throat> 3 minus twice x gives you 3 minus 2 into 1 by 4, which is 3 minus half. Uh, no, this is 1 by, this is coming as 1 by 4. Let's, let me check the calculation once again. Uh, this should be 
3 minus 2 by 4. So this half. So 8 by 2. No, it's not coming. Actually, let me let me check it. Just a minute. I did it in uh, here somewhere in the copy. Um, when x is equal to 1 by 4, the point which I'm going to get from here, this point is uh, the coordinate is actually not coming. What the result is not coming actually, the desired result. So probably I have done some mistake that let us check it. One thing for sure that uh, X is equal to one by four. And this is one of the probability with which the player A is going to select his strategy one. The another probability that will be one minus X, which is one minus one by four. And that would be uh, three by four. So actually we have got our two probabilities. We have got our probabilities as X equal to. So we have got our probabilities as X is equal to, which is X comma one minus X, which is actually one by four and three by four. But here I'm not talking about one, this probabilities. I'm talking about the coordinate of this point. So this point, no, five by two is actually, yeah, yeah. What, what mistake I have done? Somewhere I have done. Yes, yes, yes. I've got it. I got, I've got it. I've got it. Thank you so much. Sometimes my, my mind becomes blank. I don't know why. So yes, it's five by two. Yes, yes, that is true. I, I did some something wrong in the subtraction. Sorry. And also if I put, uh, so you see this, you, you can write this particular point. This is the probability, but I'm not talking about the probability here. I'm talking about the coordinate of this particular point. So if I substitute this uh, one by four in the first line, we are going to get the Y coordinate as five by two. And if I do this, do the same over here. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to get five by two. So both the lines actually giving me five by two, the point five by two. So the coordinate, the coordinate of P is three by four, sorry, one by four. The coordinate of P is one by four and five by two. Okay, this is the coordinate of P. Probably we have finished writing this particular page. So I'm going, I'm going to move on to the next page. <clears throat> now, before I go to the next page, let us try to analyze something from this particular page. The analysis, so this analysis is very important. Now, suppose this point, this point P, the coordinate of this point P, let us mark this as X star and uh, Y star. This is the coordinate of this point. So it's the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. Now you carefully observe. Let me, let me first talk about that. So if this is the, this is the point X star, if I, this is the point X star. So this, this distance, this distance over here, it is your one by four. Okay. And this distance is actually your five by two. Now you see that uh, <clears throat> if player A, carefully listen to me, if player A decides that he is going to select his strategy, uh, he is going to select his strategy X, which is less than X star. X star is your value one by four. Then wh what he is going to get? What can he get from there? See, he expects the player one, if he selects X star, he is, if he selects something, some probability less than X star, he is going to expect that probably he is going to get this payoff. This, this particular line, this is the payoff, the upper portion of this line. It depends upon what player two selects. If player two selects strategy two and player one decides to, decides to select uh, uh, some, his strategy, which is less than one by four, and player two selects this strategy two, because this is the part of, the, uh, player two selects strategy one, because this particular line is a part of 
line one, then he is going to get his maximum payoff in that case. Okay. But player two, player two is not dull, dull uh, uh, player. He he also knows the rules of the game and he knows what he what player A is going to achieve with respect to his choice. So player two decides to stick to this, uh, uh, not to uh, player one, uh, uh, sorry, strategy one. So he decides to uh, stick to strategy two in that particular case. I'm going to explain the thing once again in the next uh, uh, session because this session is going to end. So I'm not writing anything. In the next session, I'm going to write uh, formally my analysis. So since the time is running out, you can put your attendance in the chat box. So just you keep on listening to me. That if player A carefully listen, if player A decides to stick to strategy, which selecting st his strategy less than X star, that is one by four. So what can player A expect? Player A can expect that if player two sticks to strategy one, that means he is going to get some maximum payoff if with respect to this line. There is a chance, but this this can uh, this can be achieved only when player two sticks to strategy one. But player two also is a clever player. He also knows the rule of the game, and he by look player one is doing the analysis on his part, and player A is doing the analysis in his place. So when player A selects strategy less than one by four. Player two decides that no, I shall not select my strategy two one. Then I am going to I am going to select the strategy two because in that case only player A is going to get this minimum because this is the lower line of this. If I compare this two, this is the lower expected value when player A selects something which is less than one by four. I think I have to stop over here because the session is going to end. It would be nice if, I, if I'm going to continue this analysis in the next session, because if I do not write anything, then you will not be able to understand what I mean to say. So let us wait for the next session to begin. But this analysis is tough. This analysis is not easy. So therefore, you have to be a little bit of analytical to do the game problem using graphical method.